One issue that we have now is water distribution. The infrastructure we have isn't big enough to maintain with the numbers that we have and the numbers that we're going. The majority of the pastures that we see around us here in this orchard have one main water source and that's it. So we're limited to what we can and can't do. We grazed a lot of the pastures on this side relying on these ponds for water. There's things that we're learning too as we go along. We'll, we'll fine tune it as we go and it'll, it'll constantly change, but I mean, that's the, the fun part of it is we can move the water around to get impact in different places and that, that's really the flexibility we're looking for. Our regenerative journey started with seven research ranches, a total of 14,000 acres. Located across Southern Oklahoma, each ranch property is unique in topography use and history. We want to take you along on our journey, showing you the challenges, the lessons we've learned, and the victories along the way to regenerating the ranch. Welcome to Noble Ranches. Let's check in with Joe Talk water infrastructure. My name's Joe Poquet. I'm the general ranch manager for Noble Research Institute. One issue that we have now is water distribution. When we increase our stock density, the ponds become further away from where the cows are grazing. So we have to get creative with electric fence and either make lanes or back graze off of a pond. So those are things that we do now. And that's, in my opinion, that's a temporary solution to a permanent problem because Water is something that's always gonna be a limiting factor when we do that. When we have the animals more concentrated, they nine times out of 10 are further away from water than they would be if we just let them continuously graze a larger paddock. So that's where we invest in water infrastructure is to have more water closer around each paddock to help us maintain our stock density. There seems to be concern about the future of our ponds. So we also know once the ground starts getting better and you start holding more organic matter and retaining more water, then ponds become really hard to fill up because ponds are based on the premise that water runs off of it. Well, based on our management, we want water to infiltrate and not run off of it. So we've, we've talked to lots of producers that say ponds are becoming a hard place to water because the water's not as good because more of the water's staying in the soil. And that's kind of twofold because once it starts staying in the soil, we have springs popping up in different places and we've heard that too. So. We're really trying to get in front of a water shortage problem and a water distribution problem by spending money to put water infrastructure in. I don't consider that an input, I consider that a, a capital investment to help us in the long run. With water infrastructure a priority, we head to Coffee Ranch to talk with Clark Roberts about his setup. So one of the things that we've been doing on this ranch is instead of whenever we have old tanks like this one over here that have got pitted out, we go ahead and we pull those up and where the float was coming in from the bottom, we'll go ahead and replace that with a riser and put a valve on it. And that allows us to have a portable tank such as this one here that I can come in and I can hook the hose in and turn the valve on. Um, and just use these portable tanks, which helps us not have so many permanent tanks just sitting around that can rot out on us. Um, it helps keep this water a little bit cleaner as well. It's easier to clean one tank than, than uh, permanent troughs that are just sitting there. Um, and it allows us some more flexibility. So um, in other places, we have risers that go down fence lines that are spaced anywhere from 200 to 500 feet apart. Um, that allows us to be a little more adaptive with our grazing and be able to, to move the animals more efficiently without having to go back to a singular water point that's permanent in a pasture. Uh, so we've moved to these just to allow for the flexibility. And that's all I have to say to that. <laughs> so yeah, this riser Right here, I can put, so this is the corner of one pasture and that's, you know, there's three different pastures that kind of meet right here. So I can just hook into this riser and put a trough for 
any three of these pastures to get a little bit different watering point. So it's real convenient when you can do that and make it water multiple pastures rather than just one. So this is an example of one of our permanent troughs that we have. Um, this one's actually in a good spot. It, we have a lane that goes around this ranch and so we use this lane to, to move cattle from pasture to pasture. And so it makes a little more sense to have a, a more permanent trough in a situation like that than rather out in a pasture in a lot of cases. Um, so we have this trough here as well as a two or three more in this lane that goes all the way around this 2,500 acres. So when we're shuffling cattle down uh, from pasture to pasture, it allows us good watering points without having to drag a trough to each individual point. And they're also good for when you've got an itch. We head north to the rocky hills of Oswald Ranch to learn how the new water system opens up previously limited grazing areas. We're on the west side of the Oswald Ranch in pasture four. Um, it's basically a, the old windmill system, the, the new water infrastructure here is. It's, Basically what you have here, you have a pump house and a well that feeds this reservoir and the pumps feed the, the lines that, uh, that feed our pastures. There's uh, the lane that I'll show you later that, that, goes, uh, that runs through pasture one through four here, which is on the west side of the ranch. Um, it has risers in each pasture through that lane and we have a portable water, which I'll also show you, that we hook up to those risers for cattle to come water out of in each paddock. So before this, we relied on our ponds and creeks on this side of the ranch. And <clears throat> so there's some ponds that were spring fed that, uh, that never went dry, but there's, there's some that, that, uh, that weren't and did go dry. And it, it really kind of affected how we grazed this side due to not having water. This is gonna make a huge difference with, you know, with us being able to stick to our grazing plan. This is a portable water that we had built. Um, it's basically just your basic water trough with a float system in it. So if we have a quick connect with a fire hose on it, we keep it backed up to the hot wire, run the hose down the hot wire to keep the, the cattle from coming around, stepping on the hose and flooding the lane here. As we graze this side of the ranch, we can move this to, to any point of, of those pastures and, and get water to the cattle. And uh, especially like this year, we're pretty dry and we can't really rely on a lot of these ponds on this side. And even in the middle of the ranch, <laughs> once we get our water infrastructure fixed like we wanted, we'll be able to use this everywhere. These are some of the ponds we've relied on in the past on, on this side of the ranch to, uh, to provide water to this side because these ponds are spring fed. When, when some of the others would go dry, these ponds always had water. Um, before we had the, the water infrastructure that we have now, we, uh, we grazed a lot of the pastures on this side relying on these ponds for water. And uh, that meant back grazing to these ponds or, or uh, just fencing around them, you know. Uh, since we've changed our way of grazing, it's, uh, it's actually made it a lot easier because we weren't so far away of the way we were moving through these pastures. Um, we could split it up and, and have easier water points, more access to water. Um, but this, this new water infrastructure that we have with the, the risers throughout these pastures and the portable water, is gonna make a huge difference on, on how we graze. From Coffee Ranch, we head north to PDF. There, we question an ag sage about his early successes in creating cleaner, natural watering holes. No ponds were fenced on this farm in 1980. This pond was muddy, and you could see maybe one inch through the water. I mean, it was just everything, you know, it was bare banks up, you know, four or five foot away from the deal. We used all the pond. We had no water troughs on this part of the farm. The only water trough was around the corrals. 
you know, the two sets of corrals. And, and so they used the ponds for water and, and it was just too much disturbance. There's too much light. You know, animal impact's good, but it can, everything's relative in life. You know, we need water to live too much we drown. Everything's relative in life. You know, so we had too much animal impact. So we, we picked some of our better ponds and we chose to fence them. And what we did is we came in here with the traco, since this was an old silted in pond, real gradual slopes that the cattle broke down the slopes over the years. And so we took a track hoe and dug out a hole here to create a slope with a three to one slope where it dropped one foot for every three foot lateral distance, 30% slope. And then we came in here with riprap and laid in a layer of riprap to give a, a foundation and walked it in. And then we put road gravel, three inch surge on top of it to fill in the gaps. And that way our thought process was the cattle they didn't like standing on the rock a whole lot. They'd come in here and get their water drink and go back out there and do their business. You know, the defecation and the urination. We didn't want the nutrients in here. We wanted them out there on the pasture. And so we use these for water points for, I'd say at least 20 years. For most people that we work with that have livestock, they use ponds. More and more of them are going to water, better water. But this also gives the livestock better water quality because they're not bogging in the mud and stirring it up. That right there, the the dissolved solids, the, you know, clay is the most common pollutant we have in water and, and our soil is. And we don't want the soil in the pond. We want it out here. That's right. After a quick tour, Mike gives the guys a simple trick for the algae in their stock tanks. The Red River Farm back in the 80s, mm -hmm. we stocked goldfish in these ponds because they would eat the algae. That's what Stephen Smith recommended. But but you have to keep water in there all the time. Obviously yep. the fish aren't going to live, but uh, you know, it ain't gonna take but about two dozen goldfish in a pond this size. And you know, I'm talking about like three inch goldfish, two or three inch goldfish, they're yeah. pretty cheap. Does the uh, filmless algae give you issues? Not really. Doesn't? Not no really. issues, the cattle don't, doesn't bother them. If it was a real issue with the livestock, if it is, the goldfish would be a reasonable solution if we're gonna keep water in the trough. Well, that'd be a good idea. I mean, just to just to have it clean, because I mean, there, there comes a point where you do need to clean them. So, I mean, like you see, I mean, this this one's, I think we put it in a year and a half ago and it's already got buildup at the bottom. I mean, probably got that much algae in the bottom already. Yeah, well, if, goldfish thrive on that. How long do they live in there? If that doesn't dry out forever. I mean, they get bigger, right? Yeah, they get bigger, they'll even reproduce in there. Can you sell goldfish? Yeah, could we? We started yeah. goldfish. Goldfish farming? Get good. I got enough. We got enough of these out here. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you probably run a thousand head of goldfish out here. <laughs> we leave Joe and Brooks to ponder their new business venture and head south over to Red River Ranch. got one well that runs this whole ranch and it's about two miles north of here. Uh, the well runs three houses, the shop and, and all these water troughs. It's all tied into one, one system. This is a four ball mirror fount. This is main water source for this pasture here. Uh, we've had as many as 300 mature cows drinking out of it at, at one time with that many cows on it and certain times of the year, the recharge on it is not quite strong enough. Uh, cows don't never run out of water, but it's, it's just barely enough water. So uh, that's some things we're gonna have to work on as far as getting more flow going to them. The majority of the pastures that we see around us here in this orchard have one main water source and that's it. So we're limited to what we can and can't do as far as if we want to not back graze, it, it's hard to do because there's, there's not enough water points. This new infrastructure we're planning on putting in, as far as this loop around this pivot, it, it'll help us out tremendously because we can, we can fence off of it any direction, however we want to, and have portable troughs that we can drag around and water either side of the fence. So if, if we want to water in that orchard over there, on this end, we can tie onto the same one that we're watering out of this field in. Once we get this loop in, it, it, should, 
it should help us to pretty much supply water to about 600 acres right here in just in this area and that that that's going to be that's going to be big for us because some of these some of these pastures that we're looking at back back this direction that they don't even have water in them so it, it, it'll help a lot We've made a lot of progress so far. Um, the cattle really enjoy the fresh water. We've really been able to dial in our grazing with having more water available. There's still a mile long list of projects to keep up with for water infrastructure. So we still got a lot to go, but all the investments we've made so far in water infrastructure, I think we're seeing a return in it just in animal performance and behavior. And I ex expect that to get better. If the water keeps flowing and the grass keeps growing, life on the ranch is good.